This is Wild Chronicles. The emperors of Antarctica are the world's largest penguins, and possibly the most famous, thanks to the movie March of the Penguins. But they aren't the only ones in a heroic struggle for survival in this frozen wilderness. Their chin straps, with the distinctive black line across the bottom of their face, like an ear-to-ear -ear grin. Gentoos, which look like a creature that's overdosed on gothic eyeshadow. And the delis, which are among the smallest of the penguins, weighing only about 8 to 10 pounds. But for any of the penguins, the Antarctic is not an easy place to grow and thrive. We just saw a chin strap penguin grooming himself while a leopard seal lounging in the background and yawning. Normally he'd be using those jaws to eat the chin strap penguin. Rosemary Dackett works with a research group Oceanides. So, this is what happens to an unlucky penguin who becomes dinner for a leopard seal. Potential dangers abound here. Some apparent, like hungry leopard seals. Others hidden, like rising temperatures. The Oceanides team is here at the Antarctic Peninsula on the National Geographic Endeavor. Their mission is to count chin straps, adelis, and gentoo penguins. It may seem basic, but it's one of the most effective ways to monitor the health of populations. You can see that certain of these little colonies have numbers, and some of them have been staked. These are colonies that we have been monitoring since 1994. Early in the breeding season, the researchers first counted all the nests to estimate the number of eggs. Now they're back to count the chicks to figure out how many hatched. The chicks of this age are, are crushed. It means they're about five weeks old, and they're just about they're independent enough that the parents can leave them alone and go out to get food because both parents need, at this point need to get a lot of food. So this is the perfect time to count them. There's not a lot of uh, mortality after this point. They're getting too big to die from cold weather and they're getting too big to be eaten by skuas. However, a late season egg is no match for these hungry birds. The main job of adults and chicks at this time of year is to get fat. Both parents are going to see, primarily to catch krill, and are bringing back anywhere from a pound to two pounds of food a day. The chirping, pecking, persistent offspring are begging for most of it. You know, you can imagine it's quite easy for a couple of chicks to actually try and get a free meal from another adult. So mum or dad will run off like that and only your own kids will be daft enough to chase you all the way down the beach. <laughs> and the second thing is then you stop and feed one of them and when one has been fed, then the, the second chick will run and that way the first chick is so full of food now it'll fall over and lie on the beach and the second chick is hungry and that'll keep running. <laughs> so that way you both get a decent feed. Researchers also note how the penguins build their nest using rocks. So a couple years back, we decided to figure out how many rocks it takes to build a penguin nest. It's amazing. I mean, you consider that every single rock is brought one by one, beakful by beakful. Adelis don't have too many, usually around 100, 200, somewhere like that. But the gentoos can have 2,000 or so <laughs> in their nests. It's just an amazing thing. If your job is to spend all day watching bird behavior, then you can hardly do better than monitoring penguins. These entertaining birds make for entertaining researchers. All the birds go, ah, 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 ah. all at one time. And it usually starts at one end and it's like a wave. And one bird begins and the next all starts. And uh, we're not really sure what it means and what they're telling each other, but my theory is that they're just happy to be here. They're happy to have their chicks, and life is good. And they're, they're glad about it. But uh, I have no scientific basis for that. <laughs> That's just my anthropomorphizing. Not all of the observations by the Oceanides team are so positive. While the gentoos, which tend to live in warmer areas, are increasing in numbers, the gen straps are not. 
several colonies of these little penguins are in decline, and some researchers believe the adult birds are not able to find enough food for their chicks during the breeding season. Some suspect the culprit may be climate change. Temperatures here have gone up over three degrees in the last three decades. That's a dramatic change in a place where life has adapted to extreme cold. Researchers will continue to monitor these penguins in an effort to better understand how changing temperatures might be affecting them and the other creatures in this harsh and fragile frozen land.